everybody and welcome back to another video on the Military and Surplus channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the Hungarian 70M respirator. This mask is, was made in the communist era, 1947-1991, as a licensed copy of the Russian PMG. Also this mask was made up until 2001. The 70M was issue, issued to the Hungarian People Army, the Workers Militia, the Civil Defence, Border Patrol slash Guards, the Police and the Military. The rubber of this specific mask, not the PMG, screw this on, the rubber of this mask is low quality and can be quite uncomfortable at times if you have like fairly long hair or what's it called, a big head. This mask has front facing eyepieces which make it easier to look down optics or sights. The speech diaphragm here I'll just screw this off. Also, and notice that this speech diaphragm, as you can tell, this is a Hungarian one because it has more holes that are smaller, but the Russian one has, I can't remember how many holes it is, but they're fairly bigger and they're like a lot less of them. <laughs> yeah, as I said, this, this is just glued into place. This here, I'll show you up close. That's the filter. This here, it just comes with a washer on it that it out to keep it secure. This here. This one. Sorry guys, I can't get this right. One sec. There. Hmm. Uh, we'll just leave it like that and screw this back on. So, this mask does contain a double exhale valve feature, which is here. Then if I peel this back, you should be able to see underneath it. You see that extra valve in there? Yeah. That's to prevent the mask, say, if one valve is stuck open, to let air in. This is also, a, a, I'll just leave it like that, a feature on the GP5. Uh, yeah, it's located just underneath the diaphragm. This mask, is, this mask, I should say, is quite unique. As you can probably notice, all this filter port is rubber, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. The good point is, it can be, like, more flexible to your face. Obviously, mine's quite flexible, obviously, which should be. But a bad thing is, since it's like a rubberized thread, this can sometimes be, like, quite hard. So even screw its own filter in. I just have a GP5 filter here. The common asbestos one, obviously, with a plug in it. So it's going to be hard on camera. So you see, this can be quite hard sometimes. Oh, I've got it in. Oh, wow. And there is our 70M. Which can, this can also, like, lead to airtight problems if the filter doesn't screw in right. Uh, what was I saying? The 70M and the PMG both have a TISO deflector system in the moustache shape of the actual mask. i peel back the rubber so you can see this. Looks like I can't do it now. It's a lot easier than it looks. I mean, a lot harder than it looks. Here, which this system here blows air onto the lenses to prevent them from steaming up. Obviously, because you don't want fogging in the lenses. The full kit of this mask includes itself the face piece just unfold this the face piece it's filter but the original filter was a lot bigger than this and it would also yeah another note is that the filter has a tendency to pull down like that on the mask if you're wearing it so keep that in mind even though the original filter was much bigger than this and had a lot higher tendency of to like pull the mask down which could in theory create an, a non-airtight seal around your face which obviously isn't a good thing uh, the filter, which either the GP5 filter or the one issued to the 75M, goth threaded asbestos filter. If I haven't, I don't think I've said this on the channel. I'm not going to remove the plug because it's a pain in the backside to get back in. But there should be a papery substance under here. That's where the asbestos is contained. And also in the activated carbon slash activated charcoal. This is not asbestos, this is just a cotton layer to prevent any charcoal oh that's actually a bit coming through yeah this would just prevent charcoal and anything else in the filter medium to actually get through it's all 
updated here. So, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the bag, which is also wrongly known as the 65M, the filter sock, the anti-fogging inserts and the spare voice membranes. The only kit I have here today is the mask and its filter. My mask was made in, uh, I'll just show you on the side, the stamp. Where is it? Don't know if you'll be able to see that. Oh, 1990 is a size 3, which I think is either a large or a medium large. And these four dots signify that it was made in either, I think it is September to December or October to December. Yeah. And yeah, that's the bit I have to say about the face piece. As some of you may know, the mask without the filter, just like this, is quite common. I've seen this. Oh, oh. it's like quite common seeing the Half Life series of the Metro Cop mask, which obviously is a famous game, Half Life. I'm sure you'll probably know about that. The bag is a canvasy material that was impregnated with a dark green olive. Oh, sorry about that. That's my script went all funny. With a dark green olive colour. Some officers were equipped with a left-handed variant of the bag, but or a right-handed mask. This would make it exceptionally hard to place right-handed masks and their equipment back in the, back in this bag. The bag that I don't have with me include three side pocket, one used for atropine, I think, injections for, against nerve agents. Uh, the second pocket, iodine pills for radiation poisoning, and water disinfectant tablets for obviously disinfecting water if you need to. While only right-handed variants were made in Hungary, left-handed variants were imported in very, very, very small numbers from other countries in the Warsaw Pact. Just another note, I haven't said this before, about this filter and the GP5 filters. They have been rumoured to contain uh, lead paint, as the paint, on the actual filter, which isn't obviously a good thing if it starts flaking off like it has here. Hence, I leave it either on the mask or with the top cap on. Again, I don't have this here, as I'm so ill-prepared for this video. Overall, this mask could be heavily improved on, as the, the actual PMG had a much nicer rubber material and was a lot com more comfortable on the head. Also, your face will make a weird shape in this mask. I mean, the mask makes a weird shape of your face, since... Oh, do this again since I'll just try and show you Ooh, pop that back in on here where is it as you can see the chin sits there but then there's that gap there and your chin if it's too big like mine is for me my mask your chin will generally slide down there and it'll become very uncomfortable within a few minutes easily these rings here are like oh, what are the anti-fogging insert rings and as you can see, these don't take the standard GP5 ones, so they're much smaller, as you can see by the comparison with my hand. So, again, there's this strap as well, that ties around the back of the neck to connect onto there. I'll just demonstrate this, if I can get this rubber over, like that. That just clips on to that. So you can also hang it by that, but I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest, since it might eventually tear and crack the rubber, which obviously you don't want, to be honest, if you're keeping this mask as a collector like I do. So again, overall, this mask could be improved heavily, as this rubber was very poor quality, as the Soviet Union cheaped out in the end, but it would never cease to interest me, as it's a very interesting design and also has become very popular since the Half-Life series. So that was this today's video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio.